This is always the thing in the uh, tropics, especially during the build-up. Is it going to rain? Or are we going to have blue skies? The rain can certainly be isolated. It can be raining like half a kilometre from us. And then we get nothing or vice versa. So yeah, I'm directly under beautiful blue skies. And somebody is underneath that lot. And it's so dark, you would think it would be raining, but it can just hang there and hang there. But that's what it's like in the tropics. Okay, okay, let's get pruning. Morning. Jackfruit pruning. Springtime, September. Um, shortly be uh, cyclone season. So due to that. Always use this period to uh, take the height out of the trees. As I say, partly because of uh, cyclone season coming and it's also before the, the heat and humidity really starts to uh, build up. So it's more comfortable to get the, the heavy part of the work done. Quick little First of grease, got my water, got my stumpy, let's look at what we've got to do. These are what's left of the, the actual trellis trees, we took oh, probably about 150 out, purely because it if you look at it, it just gets so dense, so dense. And it's difficult to prune because if you're pruning to open them up, you're taking off your, potentially your male flowers. With semens, you don't get your fruit set. So much, much easier to uh, manage the trees in the open bar shape. And also like one thing that isn't really talked about is when you have them this dense your root system isn't as big as a naturally growing tree so you can't just go dumping a heap load of uh, fertiliser on them and expect such a small root system to take it all up. And because they're so close together, they just want to outcompete one another constantly. So, these are our trees. A little bit further back. So, as you can see, they're getting a little bit wide um, probably better explanation might be here there we go see they're closing in touching one another the branches which then will restrict the light hitting the ground we'll lose ground cover uh, and there's a little bit of height up there. So we want to take that height off. That's um, quite vigorous growing wood. And that's competition for your nutrients. Taken away from uh, or competing with the fruit. So affecting the fruit development. So the plan is to take the height off take some of the side branches off and 
get them back to a nice vase shape nicely opened up ready for the really hot period before the, the heat comes and the humidity so that's the plan for today already done some and chipped all the uh, the prunings chip them down get the ground cover with the mulch which then reduce again because we're coming into the hot period and potentially a dry period it protects the soil stops the soil from drying out stops the big difference in heat uh, if you've got bare soil or close to bare soil the heat will build up during the daytime cool down at night too much fluctuation and then obviously bare soil is always just dries out far easier far quicker than uh, soil that's covered in either grass or mulch <clears throat> so that's the plan for today and well, hopefully we kind of do a i suppose you'd say a before and after <laughs> and again they've got to thin out the fruit I really, really have to, we'll have to do the figures and um, whether to look at doing the green jackfruit as well. Would be awesome to do the green jackfruit and to process it. As you can see, we'd be taking this fruit off here. At not much bigger than that, which then we'll let this one follow on and same here another month maybe we'd be taking this off this one then follows builds up then this one just ongoing so although you don't get anywhere near as much um financial return per fruit maybe per tree because you'd be having way more green jackfruit picking M might be worth it We'll have to uh, work out how many fruit would have been on had we not have thinned out as much. And also taking fruit off that's out here that we'd be able to allow to uh, develop because it wouldn't be that heavy. So, mm, might be worth thinking about doing that, processing it, because at the moment all green jackfruit um <clears throat> that's been um processed i suppose you'd say cut up and what have you all comes from abroad in tins so there's a lot of um mileage in that mm, maybe worth thinking about if we could do it here in australia at a something like a competitive rate not easy because obviously labor cost is significantly more here than it is <coughs> in places like Vietnam but yeah a lot of people don't like buying the fruit like this and doing it themselves because of the latex that gets on the knives it's a little bit messy but if you were doing high volumes it might be worth it alrighty let's get ready for um pruning. Whole heap of prunings there and Bear in mind, we have already pruned this tree once, twice in terms of fruit or fruit set. Um, I've just counted 51 fruit that I've <coughs> removed. And there's still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's still a dozen fruit on there that we'll now allow to uh, develop fully. So that's a lot of fruit that we've already taken off, as in the right size for green jackfruit. So it's certainly worth think, thinking about. Um, anyway, this, all these prunings now, will be chipped down, spread out to protect the ground and puts organic matter back in. Opened up, not overly, um, there's not going to be, um, excuse me, sunburn on the branches because there's enough dappled shade there to protect the branches and <clears throat> the sort of wood that we're removing from the top is this um, really vigorous, fast growing suckering wood and that's competition for, um, for the fruit. Can't take it off while it's short, young, because it, this can also be fruit setting wood, the thick wood, but once it's that sort of length, yeah, remove it. So that's the height that's been brought down, opened up. And the last time we pruned this in terms of height and opening up was uh, three months ago. We'll do it again in another three months, which is a hot, humid time, sort of February. But that will be more removing. Let me see if I can show you. We'll be removing these thin ones. So it's a light prune um, because there'll be more wood that comes from there. So if you don't remove this thin old wood, then new wood will come there. Then it starts to get really congested and it will be on this young wood here. Let me see if I can show you. So here, this young wood will also potentially carry your male flowers. Yeah, where are you? There. So February time, we remove all that light wood, opens it up, encourages the fruiting and, or the flowering, should I say, and then we get plenty of male flowers that we then, how can I put this? If you don't do the light prune before the second flush comes, then it gets really dense and that's when you have problems with the humidity is too high, it's too dark, so you don't get the fruit in the same. Go around, remove all that sort of stuff. It opens it up. That way when the male flowers come on the new foliage, the new growth, it, it isn't overly congested. It isn't too dark. So that's what we do in February time. There isn't much in terms of taking a big pruning. It's just a very light prune. Open it all up. Get the male flowers coming. You don't have to um, prune when, the, when you've got the male flowers. And then probably April, May is when it's the wet seasons come. It's cooled down somewhat and you can then look at taking the height off. So this height wise should do us through um, through the cyclone season. Shouldn't be too much height because we don't sort of hammer the trees with a nitrogen heavy fertilizer. Can't get close up, hope it's not too dark. But if you look at the fruit, all of these lumps are quite feel quite sharp to the touch, it's very spiny, but then as it develops, all those spines 
begin to stretch as the fruit's failing out on the inside it all begins to stretch and becomes flatter see it begins to sound more hollow rather than a dead dull noise Need to take these off. You can see here. I um, I've already removed fruit set to let this develop. My God, you could just let it keep flowering and flowering. There are so many fruit on here. Serious consideration for uh, doing green jackfruit. It's just whether we could compete with imported stuff. Be interesting what people think about uh, Australian grown and produced green jackfruit. As in, it would all be peeled, chopped up, and don't know, maybe vacuum packed. So when I talk about removing these really thin, weak I uh, can't call them branches but growth um, this is the reason why because this here is an old one and then it will reshoot from the same node and then next year reshoot again so you can end up with way way too much um, growth on the inside which then leads to uh, high humidity and the branches just getting shaded out, which then potentially lead to um, certainly uh, non-fruiting wood, but potentially the branches dying because it's shaded out. So yeah, removing the old ones. So like this one I'll take. Here, I'd already taken one a while back and as you can see it's regrowing be sitting there and one that I've if it'll focus the branches <laughs> the branches moving um, I've just taken this one off because there's another one growing there so it's just a matter of um, maintaining the openness of the tree and the better it is as in ventilation getting through, the less risk of disease and such like. All right then, get some fuel in there. my bum there. Fuel on, choke on a little bit of revs. Just got to let it warm up for a little bit and then we'll get going.
this is what we did last week. Just beautifully covers the ground. Yeah. All about trying to build soil and keep it in good condition. And hopefully you can see the difference here with opening it up, the lights getting through to the ground there and then all the prunings have been mulched so that's for protecting all the soil and the fruit is getting a lovely lovely dappled shade okay so that's our pruning hopefully till end of january maybe february cool bye bye